Hi everybody, it's Mr. Defy once again. Welcome back to another video. Uh, in this one, I'm going to talk about slope intercept form, but in kind of a different way, in that this time we're going to look at functions that don't appear to be in slope intercept form, and yet your task is to make them so. Remember that slope intercept form is y equals mx plus b, and I think it's important to note that just from the start so that we're clear when you read or hear slope intercept form, you associate that with y equals mx plus b, okay? And although it's been said in my past videos, it might be good at this time to also quickly touch upon what these parts mean. The b, once again, is your y-intercept. And this is typically given or thought of as an ordered pair, since it is a point um, on the y-axis and on the line that cuts through the y-axis. And this is always going to be 0, comma, whatever number that b is, wherever a line hits the y-axis, that will be the number that goes in place of the b. It's also good to think of this as a place of beginning when you're trying to graph. The m, this represents slope, which can also be understood as change in y over change in x as the two things are happening at the same time. It's known as a rate of change. Rate of change. And this will be important for one of our examples coming up. Okay, let's tackle the first question here. Now, there is a graph uh, or a coordinate plane here at the side, but we'll get to that in just a moment. For now, your task is to graph that function. Now, normally, to graph a function, the one of the easiest forms it could be in is in slope-intercept form. If it's not, however, like in this case, it isn't, then one good thing to do would be to change it into slope-intercept form. That's just one option. There are others that you can take, but our focus today is on changing into slope-intercept form, so that's the direction that we'll go. Now, to change it into slope-intercept form, you have to remember, and I'll go back over here, that in slope-intercept form, the y on the left side is completely isolated. So that y dominates the left side and nothing else is allowed to share that space with the y. And on the right side, we have the mx and the b and they all crowd that right side together and form a group of two terms. Now, if we look at our example here, that's not the case. See, our y is not alone. In fact, our y is far from being alone because along with the y being there, we also have a coefficient of one. This is really secretly a negative one y. So there's a negative one crowding the y and there's also a negative three x crowding the y. And they're forcing the y to be in this group it just doesn't want to be in. So we have to try to help it along and we want it to turn into y equals mx plus b, or slope-intercept form, okay? I'll put it here at the side, so we have our end goal in mind. This is what it's supposed to look like, with the m and b, of course, having some numbers in there. So the first thing to do when you're trying to, to change this, you want to um, treat it as you would a regular equation, meaning that if you know that the y is what you want to isolate, then the best term to go for first would be the one with the x, and that in this case would be the negative 3x. So think about inverse operations. If you have a negative 3x, we're going to do the inverse of that, and that would be a positive 3x, okay? Now, I don't just add 3. I have to add the 3, and the x has to follow it because the negative 3 and the x together form a unit called a term. And so this plus 3x will be duplicated on the right side. And if you're wondering, Mr. D, why are you putting it so far away from the dividing line? Um, and the reason is because the 3x and the 6 are not like terms. And I want to make sure that my brain understands that when I go down, this, uh, go down one level and rewrite everything, I do not add 6 with the 3x to make a 9x. I cannot do that. The 6 does not have a variable. So the 3x and the 6 will share the same side together, but they will not combine. And that's different from these two terms over here because they are actually like terms. 
they both have the same variable. And what I can do is, what I have to do is combine them. And so negative 3x and a positive 3x end up eliminating each other. And what I need to do now is rewrite everything because I made so many changes. So on the left side, I'm going to bring down whatever is still left over, which is the negative 1y. On the right side, I have to decide which of these terms has to go first, immediately following the equal sign. And my guide for that is looking at my end result, my, the y equals mx plus b. And if I look at the right side of the equal sign, I can see, oh, what has to come after that equal sign is the term with the mx, the slope and the x. And if I look at what I have, that is clearly the 3x here. So that comes down next, and that's followed by the 6. Now this 6 is a positive 6, so I need to put a plus sign there to represent that. Now I'm not done yet because my y is still not isolated. So what I have to do is now take the negative 1 and eliminate that. So because it's negative 1 multiplied by a y, I need to do the inverse of multiplication. And the only inverse of multiplication is division. So I will have to divide negative 1 here and on the right side, both here and here. And the reason why I don't add one is because I have to divide by whatever my coefficient is. And if I have a negative one, that's what I divide by. If I have a positive nine, that's what I divide by, okay? All right, so continuing on, negative one divided by itself makes a one. So now my y is now isolated. That's looking pretty good because this is exactly what I want to happen. So I go on to the right side and I have to divide three with negative one, which would make a negative three. So now it's negative three X. And then six divided by negative one is negative six. And with that, my function is now in slope intercept form. You can see that if I were to write slope intercept form as it appears when it's blank, it would be Y equals MX plus B. Rather, I'm going to take out the plus and just put the B there. So you can see that everything does line up. So there's my Y, there's my slope, and there's my Y intercept. Okay. Now what I can do with this is go ahead and graph it, which is why I have this coordinate plane here at the, at the right side. To graph this, you need to remember the two things that are important from slope intercept form, and that is the slope and the Y intercept. So I'm going to write down what it is I have. I know that my y-intercept is a negative 6. And that tells me where to begin. Okay, so I'm going to go along the y-axis. I'm going to go down to negative 6 and place a point right there. And I'm going to stay there and wait for my directions to my next point. And I get those directions from my slope. So my slope is negative 3. However, to use the slope to get from one point to another, I need to think of this as a two-step movement. So negative three can be written as a fraction, negative three over one. And what this does is it tells me my change in y means go down three times. And that's gonna take me out of this space that I have, but I'll give you a solution to that in just a moment. The one tells me go to the right. Now, if I were to go down three times, one, on my second jump, I leave the border of my coordinate plane. And I don't want to guess where things are. Oops. I want to know for certain. So if you ever encounter a situation like that, it's the fix is very simple. You go back to your slope, and rather than have the 3 be negative, you make the 1 negative. So the 3 will become positive, and the 1 becomes negative. So that negative makes the entire fraction negative. It's not just the number that it's stuck to, it's the entire fraction that becomes negative. So it doesn't matter if it's in the numerator or denominator, which means that you have freedom to put it wherever you need to to achieve your, your graph. And in this case, I needed to move it to the bottom so that it would allow me to stay within the space of my coordinate plane. And what I mean by that is that now my change in y is telling me go up three times and then go to the left is my change in x. So watch how this plays out. So I'm going to go up three times. One, two, three. See how I'm inside the borders now instead of leaving. And then one to the left. 
Here's my second point. And now I'm ready for my line. Okay, there it is. So that's our first example. In our second example, over here, it's asking what is a slope and y-intercept? So if you notice the, the function this time, it looks very different from what we had in example one. In example one, everything was sort of uh, balanced out. We had something on the right side, we had the x and y on the left side. But here, everything is on the left side. And although we have a number on the right and that number is zero, we have to now move several more things. Um, actually, it's just one more thing. We have to move something more to the right side so that we can achieve the slope intercept form. So again, I'm trying to make this look like this. And I know at this point, it looks far from that, but this is how it goes. First, notice this 14. That 14, there's no variable stuck to it. It's just by itself floating around. That is what you want to go for first. So I'm going to think about inverse operations. If that's a 14 positive, then I will need to make that a negative 14 and place it right there. And I, it's okay to line it up with the zero because these are both just regular numbers. So they are considered like terms with each other. Okay, so what I have now is these two 14s eliminate. I get a brand new number on the right side, which is negative 14. On the left side, I bring down everything left over, which is negative 7y plus 4x. Now, again, my objective is to isolate the y. So I'm going to go for that 4x next and eliminate that. So inverse operation once again. So minus 4x, I'll, I'll put it over here to the side. Okay, so that I know that this four, negative 4x four should not combine with a negative 14. Those two eliminate. And I bring down everything left over. So a negative 7y is left over. On the right side, I'm going to put my x term first, so negative 4x, followed by my negative 14, which is minus 14. And then I get rid of my negative 7. So this negative 7 here is again multiplying with the y. So the inverse of multiplication is division. And I will divide by negative 7 because that's what I have here, here, and here. And then I finish this up. So that becomes a 1. So now I have y by itself, which is what I wanted. On the right side, negative divided by another negative is positive. So it's 4 over 7. That stays a fraction with the x. A negative divided by a negative, once again, is positive, and 14 divided by 7 is 2. And this is now in slope-intercept form. So you can see it takes on this sort of shape. And once again, I'll eliminate that plus sign so you can just make the connections. So here I have my y, here is my slope, and there is my y-intercept. Okay. So I hope this video helped. Uh, there will be one more following this. I'm just about out of time with this video, but uh, there will be a third example, as you can see over here, where we will take a quick look at how to use um, this, this scenario to create um, a function that we have seen before. So please look out for that. I hope you enjoyed my video. Please stop by and leave a comment. As always, you're welcome to stop by anytime and watch again. Take care, hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.